Welcome to episode three of our design system series. We've already created color styles and typography styles. Let's move on to create some sizing tokens. Let's jump in. In the file, you'll notice that I've laid out some different radii, fancy, and I've also laid out some different borders. These are the two variables that we're gonna create in this video. And like I always say, you can do whatever you need to. If you don't need extra small, extra, extra small to full in your border radiuses, create however many you need. Okay, let's go over what I'm suggesting. So I'm suggesting for border radius, we want to duplicate the previous number for a bit. And then at some point we kind of start going into a bit of guessing territory, but it really depends on how it looks and what your brand feel is. So in this one, I've got a two and then a four. So duplicated the two, then an eight. Then the next one is not a 16 because I feel like the jump from eight to 16 is very harsh and dramatic. If you'll notice like this is an eight. If I change this into 16, look at that. Yeah, that is already so much more rounded than this. Whereas a 12 gives more roundedness, but it's a bit of a less harsh jump. From 12, I would move on to a 20 because we're getting, now we can do a bigger jump because between 12 and 16, not big enough jump, yeah? So 12, 20 and then we get into 30 which is like I probably would not use this on a small element I'd probably use this on a larger element that I still want to round the corners of a bit and then we get into full which is just make a circle basically so 999 in this case let's create variables so I'll click on my canvas so I'm not selecting anything and then click on variables in the design panel you'll see that we already have some collections from the previous videos but I'll just create a new one so create collection and I'll call this one radius I'll create my first variable it's going to be a number variable and I'll call this one extra extra small you can name these however you want and works for you I like this kind of t-shirt sizing naming now the value for my smallest one is two because that's what I decided it was going to be. If you want to create the same kind of variable, instead of going to create variable and selecting it again, you can select your variable and then shift and enter to create a new one. This one is extra small and then this one is four. Another one, shift and enter. This one is small and it's eight. And I'll just keep creating the rest of them. Now for the full one, it really depends on what are you creating this design system for. Sometimes 99 will cut it for all of your elements to make them into circles, but sometimes even 999 isn't enough. If you're creating really huge elements, sometimes 999 will just give it a nice rounded corner, but it won't make it a full on circle. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes you may need to break it and play with it a bit more to make sure that it's an actual circle. Once I've created these variables, I want to scope them because right now these variables can be used anywhere. So let's say I put in some text. If I go into this drop down for the font size, I could technically assign it with one of these, which is for border radius. So it makes no sense. So what I'll do is I'll go into my variables, then I'll select all of them, just holding down shift and right click and then edit variables. This will open this amazing scoping menu. I'll deselect the top one and then I'll only select corner radius because that's the only place I want to be able to see them. So now if I select this text, for example, and I go into variables, you'll see that I have no variables to select. But if I select this lovely circle and then in here, I can assign it to this variable. And speaking of, I would go in and in your design system, in the file where you are laying these out, I would recommend assigning them to the variable just so you can go in and see what they're assigned to and not just leave it kind of as is. The next thing I want us to create are variables for the stroke width. I don't see this very often and I think it's something that people really kind of just forget about but it's actually pretty crucial. In our designs we do use stroke quite a lot and it's important to have a set it's important to have set widths for those so your designers don't, or you yourself, don't just go crazy and every time choose something different. My suggestion is to create these four stroke widths. So I would say have an extra small that's half of a point, so 0 0.5, then a small that's one, a medium that's two, and then a large one that in my case I put four because sometimes you just need, just need a thick stroke. So I'll create this now. I'll go into my variables, create a new collection. I could have put both of these in the same collection and called it something like size, but I don't know. It, it, to me, I prefer to put them in their own collection. And I'll call these stroke width and then add my first one. It's gonna be a number and I'll call it extra small. 
This one is 0 0.5. Using my shortcut, shift and enter, small, medium, large, done. Then I'll just assign these on my canvas. So in here, I'll select extra small, small, medium, and large. And that's that. In this super short video, we've added two really crucial elements into our design system. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified when new videos come along. Leave a comment below. Let me know what other videos you want to see. See you at the next one.